Steinhauer here. Welcome back. Uh, we'll start today with a review question from the material over last time. The question is, uh, we've got a nice uh, Hertzsprung-Russell diagram here, an HR diagram, uh, showing, uh, of course, the main sequence and some giant stars and dwarfs. Uh, the question is, which of the stars listed, A, B, C, D, or E, will live the longest? Um, from the time they're born until the time they run out of hydrogen. So what do you think? Okay, so um, going back to last class, the main sequence is a mass sequence. These are all stars that are burning hydrogen into helium on the core, but the high mass stars are at the top, the most luminous and the hottest, and the low mass stars are at the bottom, the lowest, uh, lumina lu the least luminous and the coolest at the surface um, and this is also uh, a sequence in how long these stars live. The very massive stars in the upper left lead very short lives. They have more fuel to burn, but they burn through it much, much faster. And so the longest lived star on this whole chart uh, will be the ones at the bottom. Um, and and of, the, of the five that I've indicated, A being the lowest mass will live the longest, will have the longest lifetime. And that's sort of a preview for what we're gonna be talking about in this class, um, among other things. And that is uh, trying to figure out how to determine the ages of stars, which is something that's pretty difficult to do um, for most stars in, in, in the galaxy, but can be done. So um, first let's think about, we, we've seen what the main sequence is. The main sequence is those stars that are burning hydrogen and helium in their cores what are the stars that are not on the main sequence, right? The 10% or so stars that do not lie on that main sequence of stars. What are the giants, super giants, and white dwarfs? Uh, we'll get, we'll spend a whole class talking about main evolution of stars. Uh, it's an important topic, but for now, what do you need to know? Um, this is a lot of text, um, but basically once stars run out of hydrogen in their cores, um, they become much larger and they become much cooler, therefore, at their surfaces. And that's what those giants and supergiants are. They are typically stars that have run out of hydrogen in their core and have sort of swelled up um, and are either burning hydrogen still in some other configuration or are burning some other element in their core. Uh, those stars tend to move off the main sequence and up and to the right. Um, that explains the giants and supergiants. The white dwarfs, the objects that are below the main sequence, are the dead remnants of stars, things that are called white dwarfs. Um, and that's where the sun will end up someday. We'll talk more about all of those things, but I didn't want you to leave you hanging on what all of those things were in the HR diagram uh, and move too far ahead. Okay, um, so this is just a, a, a we, we talked about there being a mass sequence. And this is an it's an important thing. We know that the top of the main sequence is high mass and the bottom of the main sequence is low mass. That only works for main sequence stars. There is a mass sequence for main sequence stars. There is no mass sequence for the giant stars. There is no mass sequence for the white dwarf stars. And so um, it's only main sequence stars that you can say that the more luminous. Now in general, the more luminous, the, the more massive they are. On the, in the giant branch too, but it's not really a, a sequence in that way. You can have a star way up here that is less massive than a star that's below it and less luminous in this diagram. So there's no mass sequence here. There's no mass sequence here. There is a nice mass sequence on the main sequence itself. Okay, so here's some questions, some more questions for you. We've got, we've got three stars here, four stars here, three on the main sequence and one giant branch. One of the giant, one of the giants. Um, which of these stars will have changed the least 10 billion years from now? Do you think? And I've even got the lifetimes over here, so you can see um, on the main sequence. 10 to the seven is 10 million. 10 to the nine is a billion. 10 to the 10 is 10 billion. Which of these do you think will be changed the least 10 billion years from now? Okay. Having paused the video and come back, what did you think it was? Well, um, we know it can't be A, right? A has a lifetime of less than 10 to the seven years, less than 10 million years. 10 million is just 10 to the 10 to the seven. 
So um, star A will be long gone 10 billion years from now. Even star B, which has a li total lifetime of 10 billion years, assuming that it's not zero aged now, will have run out of hydrogen 10 billion years from now and will no longer be here on the main sequence. I haven't talked about D, but these guys are moving around on the, on the giant, in the giant region all the time. These things don't really even stay put for very long. And so 10 billion years from now, star D will be completely gone too. But down here, star C, this has a lifetime. This is 10 to the 11 years. This is 100 billion years on a lifetime, right? The universe is only 14 billion years old now. In 10 billion years, the oldest this star could possibly be is 24 billion years. And its lifetime is way longer than 100 billion years, right? So this star in 10 billion years from now will still be sitting there chugging along, slowly burning its hydrogen into helium on the main sequence and will not have moved at all. And this is an example showing how we can use stellar mass to get a relative age. Uh, for instance, we know that all stars up here at the top of the main sequence have to be young stars. And by that, I mean less than 10 million years old. Remember, the sun is a 5 billion year old star. It's a medium aged star. All of the stars up here, though, have to be young. Why? Because they don't live very long. All the stars above, above this point have lifetimes less than 10 million years. So all the stars that are here must be less than 10 million years old. All the stars up above this point must be less than 100 million years old. All the stars up here above this point must be less than a billion years old. So you can't say for certain that a star here is younger than a star here because you don't know, but you can say on average, the stars up here on the top of the main sequence have to be younger than the stars down here at the bottom of the main sequence. So you can get kind of get average relative ages that way. Can you do better? Well, here, here's, here's basically the same question I just asked. Which of these stars can be no more than 10 million years old? We've already sort of answered it. It's this one, right? This one can be no more than 10 million years old. This one might be 10 million years old, but it certainly can be older. This one might be 10 million years old, but it probably is much older than that. Uh, but up here, these stars only live for 10, 10 million years. This star uh, must be less than that because if it were older than that, it would have already evolved off the main sequence. It would have already run out of hydrogen and evolved off of the main sequence. So you can get, again, the relative ages of these stars based on where they are on the HR diagram. Okay, I'll stop there and we'll come back in the next video and talk about star clusters, why they're important in astronomy and how we can use them to get actual ages of stars. Stay tuned.